Hello and welcome. My name is Jax Jacobson with Mining Magazine, and today I'm speaking with Kenneth Rawl, the Director of Tailing Solutions for FLS Smith. Hello, Ken. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. And you? Good. Fantastic. So uh, today we're talking about tailing solutions and, and tailings technologies. And I'm, I'm curious about the state of the market and the state of uh, tailings activities in general since the global standard was released uh, three years ago. So maybe we can talk a little bit about um, what that and how you've seen mining companies respond to that. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, FLS, we created our tailings group uh, about seven years ago, uh, and it, we've seen since the, the standard was released a, a significant, um, basically, increase in inquiries um, about alternate tailings solutions. Um, a lot of customers are, are doing more investigating from lab studies, you know, where they're just looking at all the different options, whether it's just normal thickening or paste thickening or filtered wanting to better understand the costs associated um, as well as the different types of technologies that would go into the different flow sheets. So we, we've definitely seen over the a transition from just kind of general presentations to customers looking at lab work to there's quite a few customers now investigating pilot scale as they kind of go up in size and, and collect more data to become more comfortable with these alternate, you know, tailing solutions. Uh -huh, fantastic. And, and who has been really most interested in these new technologies? Is it the larger companies, more established companies, or is it a whole, does it run the gamut of, uh, of the companies within the industry? I think it's been most every company size. Uh, we do see um, from the larger mining companies, kind of a more concerted effort where they're doing global tailing challenges that they announced to the, to the world. Um, you know, there's a lot of meetings, they're joining kind of consortiums uh, that are focused together to look at the, the tailings options. But we also see from, from smaller miners with maybe a single or only two sites, um, especially if they're in development and they're having to look at permitting, they're coming to us and wanting to, to understand the costs associated with that. And, and sometimes it's because, you know, it's easier to get permitting for filter tailing versus a big wet impoundment. So there's, there's a number of options um, that, or, or reasons, drivers that, that they, they look at those, you know, some is water scarcity, water cost permitting. So there, there's quite a bit of difference uh, globally, different countries have different regulations, different regions have different, you know, kind of water environments, whether it's, you know, scarcity or expense. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's across globally, you know, companies of different size are looking. Fantastic. Great. So, I mean, uh, and being, speaking from a, from a meta or a macro level, what kind of technologies um, are companies most interested in at this point and, and trying to up their tailing this game? So for, for countries where it's, um, or companies with the sites that are in, we'll say water scarcity, they'll look at um, primarily looking at comparing paste versus filtered tailings mm -hmm. to see which one of these will provide um, enough water recovery to, to close a water balance uh, for, the, for the, you know, most affordable, you know, you know for the least amount of, of cost. So, you know, within the filtered tailings, there's there's options for the technologies, vacuum filters, pressure filters, dewatering screens, you know, centrifuges. So, I mean, they'll look at, you know, what kind of, of um, what kind of moisture do they need to achieve in their tailings to, to get enough water back. So, you know, for their, for their operation. So there, there's a lot of different testing involved and in looking at not just you know, pace for filter, but what different technologies do you use in each of them um, to achieve mm -hmm. what your, your, your goal is? Absolutely. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what FLS is working on. Sure. I mean, we've, you know, we've been putting together, um, I said, we, we started the, the tailings group seven years ago. And since then, we, we've been helping customers look at the different options. We've, we've seen in the past, um, you know, all the way back to when we were working with an industrial partner for Ecotail solution, which is commingled, 
about going bigger and bigger on the filters. Um, and, and pretty much all the, the OEM suppliers for filters have been going bigger and bigger. Uh, and I, I think we've we've gotten close to where we need to be on sizes. It's more now looking at a, a total cost of ownership, um, including the operating costs. You know, for for operating a pressure filter, for example, your main operating costs are, are uh, air compressor power uh, for the cake blow and cake drying and the the filter media. So we've we've kind of gone. We're, we're still looking at optimizing the, the designs of larger filters. But we're doing a lot of research on, you know, how do we optimize the operation through improved plate design, uh, media, as, as well as, you know, what information is needed um, to actually run the filters better. And, and so there's been a push uh, within our digital group to, to improve both the, the expert control systems as well as the, the sensor technology uh, so that we can get the necessary data um, to better run, provide a more consistent operation, and, and really achieve better results. Uh -huh. And so with this operation-wide uh, focus, is that because uh, you're trying to create a situation where fewer tailings are produced in the end? Yes, we, we do have, um, I mean, because we do supply the equipment in the full flow sheet for, for most concentrators. You know, some of the digitalization efforts uh, is looking all the way up into the comminution circuit where we use load I, our load IQ to optimize the, the mills. And then we have our smart cyclone technology. And when, especially when you combine them, you get a, uh, we reduce the overgrinding. And so you're producing fewer fines. So you actually improve, let's say the characteristics of the tailing so it's easier to do water. And then when you include some of our newer reflux technologies, you know, reflux flotation, um, coarse air, uh, as well as just the reflux classifier, which is a gravity separator. If you move those into the, the, the beginnings of the circuit, it's, it's almost like um, you're wanting to, with the coarse air, you're gonna to try to recover uh, coarse part of valuable particles. You're gonna reject the coarsest um, material, you know, barren material. And therefore, it never really goes through your normal flotation process or other processes for upgrading, and it can bypass. Um, we have looked at, you know, what is available for, you will say, you know, you know ore sorting or particle sorting. Um, those have not quite made it to the market, I think, for, for larger scales. And so those are still products that we're investigating and, and working on developing uh, to see how we would incorporate those into our conveyor system to technology. Well, thank you very much. That was very informative. And I, I really, I learned a lot here. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk.